are you one of those parents or guardian who is adamant that your child should not be stressed because they are not paying bills they don't have responsibilities as the adults do hmm well I beg to differ I don't support your point of view and I know that's your point of view however it is important that we understand that children are also human beings and just like us adults we have our phase where we experience stress or our, our stress levels increase kids experience stress in their own way all right and sometimes parents are the ones who add to their kids stress all right and that is why i believe that some of the students aren't learning the way that they are supposed to learn there are several different factors that may contribute to it and this is just my observation over many years all right and even with myself going to high school let me start with me i believe that the most stressful time of my high school years was sixth form and it was towards the latter end of sixth form when it was exam time all right and I can tell you, my parents had no, nothing to do with that stress. It was the pressure of what is required, what is needed, the expectations. All right. And knowing that at the time I had four CAPE subjects studying for, even though the time period, they weren't that close in terms of the date for the exams but i was stressed seriously stressed all right so i i do understand and i know and sometimes some of us as parents we forget that we once used to attend high school all right our school in general and i want to begin by saying parents open up your eyes be understanding all right i'm not telling you to be your child's friend be the parent but be understanding all right understanding in the point whereas you are realistic because if you're unrealistic that can cause trouble for the child as well as you understanding what is happening with the child all right so we're going to go into several of those reasons why i believe that children aren't learning the way they are supposed to learn so if you're new to the channel welcome if you're a returning viewer or subscriber welcome all right and if you have not yet subscribed to the channel and you have been watching the videos what are you waiting for Please subscribe and all my subscribers if you have not turned on your post notification bell please turn them on so that when videos are uploaded you will get notified all right so let's divulge now my number one reason why I believe that students aren't learning the way that they are supposed to learn is stress mm-hmm Kids experience stress too, all right? And sometimes the stress comes from several factors. So let me look at the number one stress factor, the home, all right? The responsibility that the child may have within the home. And I am not telling anybody how to run their home. That's all on you. But look at what responsibilities are given to the child in the home all right outside of the norm of doing home chores nothing wrong with that but you have to make it 
plain and level and fair. So if one child in the home is getting 90% of the chores to do, when other siblings in the home can also participate, that can be a stress factor. Another thing that I also observed is parents are leaving the younger siblings for the other siblings to take care of. So they have to get up, they have to bathe them. That's for the young, young, younger ones. They have to bathe them. They have to get them dressed. They have to make breakfast for them and themselves. And they have to bring them to school. They have to take them back home from school. Repeat the same process. Um, prepare dinner. And that's dinner preparation now, not just for the sibling, but for the entire family. And I understand that parents have to go out and work. But remember, you know, are you have the picnic them, are you have the kids them, and you are the adult, so you have to make preparations for your child or children. When you add added stress to them, so it's like they are the ones now taking care of that child Monday to Friday while you go out and work and even sometimes Saturdays for those parents who work on Saturdays. It's not fair. Because they have to come home, they have to do all of that. Plus, mind you, they have schoolwork. So, they have schoolwork, and that is why some of your kids cannot be involved in extracurricular activities at school because as the bell ring, them have to leave, go pick up the kids, and Edwum for go cook. So when you come from work, you have dinner, and the kids have dinner. And I'm not saying that if the child is a is an older child, like a teenager, maybe 15 to 17 years old, they can't have some of that responsibility to do. But not every single week, every day, Monday to Friday, like that. Come on, parents. You have to, you have to create a balance, man. Say you do it three times out of the week, then, and then that child do it twice. Because at the same time, they are learning to cook and they are learning responsibilities that will help them as they move forward in life. But too much of that affects their learning. And as a result, some of those younger kids are the ones that allow the child or the children to be late for school because some of them aren't so easy to deal with. And so that child have to develop some tolerance level to deal with that child, our children. So it can be challenging for them and stressful for them. All right. So observation number two. That would be the fact that some, some children, they hate school, all right? And the reason for them hating school is because they don't feel like that environment is for them. Mm -mm. Because one, they might have issue with a teacher. They might have teachers. They might have issues with classmates or schoolmates. And so they don't feel happy. They don't feel welcome when they're at school. And if it's a case where as it's a child that goes to bed late at night for whatever reason, comes to school, and is habitually sleeping in class, 
that will not go down well with the teacher. And we know that a child may sleep in class for various reasons. The child may be ill. All right. The child may be going through grief with the death of a family member or friend. Mm -hmm. And it can be a case where as the child is just tired and just needs some rest. You know? But... It is hard <laughs> it is definitely hard for some kids and because of that it affects their learning and some teachers not easy to deal with either you know some teachers uh, they can be a handful as well all right but um the learning is affected and and especially more so now after covid the set of kids now in school are way 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 behind and different in their behavior their attitudes after covid because a lot of them were locked in and they could not see or visit or go places that they would normally go and that affected them whether or not you believe it that affected them all right especially if you're not a homebody person you like to be up and about yes it affects the mind you know and so the brain is affected likewise hmm. point number three all right the issue of the curriculum the curriculum can be quite intense all right and sometimes kids may get homework or assignment to do and it can be so intimidating because it may it, it it would have been explained by the teacher but the child did not fully understand what the teacher was saying and may be afraid to ask the teacher miss or sir could you replete the explanation of what i should do mm -mm. and because they are afraid to do that some of them are afraid to ask the questions because their classmates might think that they are stupid or, or their classmates might laugh at them and they may feel embarrassed they don't do that But I want you to let your child or children know that everybody's learning is individual. Even when they have group work or group assignment to be done. Each individual student have to take something from the group assignment. If that is not done, then the understanding will not be there. And so let them know that no matter what your classmate may think of you, at the end of the day, you are the one going home alone to do that assignment with the help of the parents who can help because there are parents who the child come home with the homework mommy daddy auntie uncle grandma um i got this homework to do can you assist me some of them will say mm, later man or um i'm not have time for that no i'm busy later or some of them will say go make your sibling help you or some of them will say didn't pick me on you school are you are you, are you alone I understand him something here. 
and the reality is nobody have time to assist and the child is there not understanding what is happening and so the child becomes frustrated fed up and said okay nobody can help me me not understand me not do nothing and so that also prevents them from being able to learn well in the particular class because especially if it's a teacher where when you come to assignment you care homework you can't get to in a class there you have to face some penalty and i mean there are programs within several institutions that will allow kids after several strikes of not doing homework or assignment you're calling their parents um have their parents informed that the parents be reminded that okay the child did not submit such and such an amount of assignment and if this continues this is what will happen yeah so and then for some there are no penalty so the child always feel free oh i'm gonna do the homework mm, not now i'm to me yes something is happening you are not learning and you are going to be left behind so when the other kids are moving ahead you're stuck and so we have a learning gap that anchors learning mm -hmm. point number four some of our kids our students they face or have learning disabilities and so when teachers identify that these kids aren't learning the way that they are supposed to and we make the necessary referral when the parents are called in some of these parents are in total denial that their their child has some learning disability they, they they'll they'll say oh him just him just now focus miss him just lazy sir him not have no time to take up him book but guess what the child is really suffering from a learning disability we have students in school at the high school level who cannot read after going through the different levels of education and getting to high school you would ask yourself the question how is it that this wasn't identified a long time ago but it's not that it wasn't identified. The issue most of the time is the parent. Why? Because they don't want their child to be taken out of the regular school setting and be placed into an environment that is more suitable for their needs. The parents are thinking solely about themselves. Oh, what will my other family members think about me what am i going to think about john what am i going to think about mary and so the parent never makes the move that they are supposed to make to help the child and so sometimes you wonder how the child just go through the education system so and come out and can't read no parents remember that teachers can do so much and no more when teachers have a class size of 35 to 40 odd students in there and you have 
students in there that learn differently and you have to cater for differential learning and you are given x amount of time to have your class x amount of time to carry out your lesson x amount of time to have them engaged where will the time come from for individualized learning you tell me i know i know it's hard and and parents if you realize that your child have learning dif disability have a learning disability or if the necessary individuals have informed you that your child has a learning disability and you were asked to do x and you did not do x mind you that child may be ridiculed it is not supposed to be but remember that outside of the classroom there's lunch time there's after school and other students or even community community uh, members may may come across your child on a daily basis and realize certain things and kids talk you might live in the community as a student that is in your child's class and that that child go home and say um mommy you know say john can't read and the parent is like yes you sure sure yes mommy john can't read you know how much you get on the test one percent you know how john me see john book you know and if we are them the writing the way in a john book them them not them are not no word in a english me no know if a hebrew or a <laughs> Lord Jesus, we have to take bad things, make joke. But hey, guess what? That's the reality. That's the reality. And some of us as parents, some of you parents, you are afraid. You are afraid. Because you are not doing your child good. It's you that you're thinking about. Oh, me don't want nobody. Me don't want nobody. Me don't want nobody talk to me. And tell me, say, oh, me pitney retarded. Mm. No, your child is not retarded. Your child is facing or suffering from a learning disability that is going to affect them in the future if you don't do your part. There are students who... They are given short sentences to write and they'll take the entire class to write it. So the job and the responsibility of a teacher is it's a lot. It's a lot. So parents, help your children. Help them. They need the help. Another factor, which is observation number five, is comparison. If you have two or more children, and not even if you have your own children, because there are parents who tend to love compare their child with somebody else that is not even a sibling. Everybody is different. All right. For the fact that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made, that tells us that everybody different and everybody learn differently. So you have two kids melissa and debbie melissa is two years older than debbie 
All right, so Melissa, 15, Debbie, 13. Two of them in high school. Melissa has always been the scholar. Debbie, the struggling one. Hear you know to Debbie. That's why I have to love Debbie so, you know, because Debbie ever do well. And you know, you just, you just, you just did it so like say, you know, care. De Debbie will reach a point where Debbie um, will not care, especially if you have been verbally abusing Debbie with your negative words and lack of motivation, especially from, say, primary school, prep school, or all in school. Debbie will reach a point where, oh, sure, mommy always has said this. Mommy always has said that. Daddy always has said this. Daddy always has said that. And when auntie come, auntie always has hug, hug Melissa because Melissa always has get trophy and certificate. And auntie not even, auntie not even hug me. And I say, um, how did you do in school um, this term, Debbie? Everybody just a hug up, hug up, and I congratulate Melissa. These things will also bring sibling rivalry. All right? And it will also bring sibling hatred. And it will also bring lack of self-esteem. And it will also bring lack of self-confidence so parents be careful and if i know siblings that are being compared it's somebody else oh you know she say john brown son up the so um receive six trophy me say when me when me when me the prize giving i see how much time John Brown's son go up and collect um, the trophy them and the certificate them. And I mean, not even see you, me not even see you go up one time go collect even one certificate. So, what you are going to school for? <laughs> Parents, every child is different. Different. Some are intrinsically motivated and some are not. Some need a push. And if you don't give them that push, they'll become demotivated and just act and behave the way you think they are. So help them help themselves. And in the process, it will help you because you're going to have less issue with your child or children. All right? Mm -hmm. the sixth observation as to why our children aren't learning is uh, the fact that their attention span is low all right and a low attention span comes about for several reasons one it depends on what type of learner they are two it depends on the topic that is being taught and three it depends on how early they retire to bed whether or not they're getting enough rest fourth is the excessive use of social media and social media in the sense whereas content is now in a shorter form than it once was years ago all right so you now have short form content and you have long form content all right, so persons might just summarize their thing in, yeah. And so 
kids find it boring to sit down and to listen and to watch something that is long let me let me use that word something that is long all right and so yes it it affects the whole learning process even to read a lot of kids don't like reading all right and that is why a lot of kids also do not take up english literature after um their third form years in high school because they don't love to read they don't love to read and 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 because reading is going to take um take up some time they don't enjoy doing so but give them social media and they're and they're fine with that yeah the rapid development of um different features in technology yeah that that has caused the attention span of um some students to be lowered and thus affects learning another factor that i also want to mention which is the seventh factor is financial situations the lack thereof all right because there are times when students they go to school with just the fear that their parents gave them or whoever is dropping them off drops them off at school and that's it for some of them it's the breakfast they have the breakfast at home and then come to school by the afternoon they're hungry and so learning may take place for half of the school day and the next half nothing is happening nothing is happening sometimes they tend to even gaze out all right their body is there physically but their mind isn't because they're hungry they're hungry and sometimes too sometimes too i see where arguments might happen between the parent and the child and The child now is given limited a money limited amount of money to come to school than what they would normally get all right and also sometimes a parent say the child lives with mommy and daddy would normally send the money for the child to go to school all right so if daddy doesn't send that money mommy might just have the fear for the child to go to school and just give the child a fear and so the child has nothing to eat throughout the day sometimes because the financial situation is very poor the child may attend school two days for the week sometimes one sometimes none so when they finally get to attend school there's so much knowledge there's so much information that has already passed them by and it's hard to catch up because when the teacher is teaching a particular topic and you miss two topics that are already linked together how are you you, you your brain or their brain would definitely have to be processing the information well or their brain would have to be quick for them to fully understand what is happening because you have some students who they find it a pleasure not to be in school and so if mommy or dad didn't have the money and nothing to them but when they do come it's a problem for them and the teacher because especially especially boys and don't come at me don't come at me parents and don't come at me um in the comment section for this but 
boys are the most disruptive students they are and especially if teaching and learning is taking place and they don't know where I go on. Same situation as me I explained earlier. Yeah. So, and even if you address the situation and you, you assist then, the same thing is being re repeated. So, how much can the teacher do? Since COVID, WhatsApp groups have been created. And I know for some schools, WhatsApp group is still effective. It's still up and running. So parents know what go on. Students know what go on. So the onus can also be on the parents and the student to WhatsApp in the group. You have a friend, you ask a friend, can you take a picture of the notes that um, you had from today's or yesterday's class and send it to me? So I can have it written down and read it to see what is happening. And if I don't understand, I can maybe ask the same friend who sent me the notes a question or ask my teacher until I am able to be back in school. But how many students actually have that interest there? How many parents also actually have that interest there? Don't know. Don't know. All right? But it is, it is frightening and it is alarming. And I see where... Oh, my God, I'm sweating. I am also aware that some students are late bloomers and so effective learning for them will come at a later date all right so parents me don't want me don't, me don't want to deal with them like them are nothing and them now go get to where they are supposed to be and them now go become nothing no mm -mm. be their number one supporter all right find out what is happening talk to them let them be able to freely come to you and say something because when they are able to do that you're also forming and developing a relationship with your own child or children because when they not have nobody to talk to, they will find somebody to talk to. And if they don't find somebody to talk to, remember, let me tell you, say, you see the mind? When the devil start, play up on that. And start telling them all sorts of things. You better know, say, some of them, something they have to act out. So they need somebody to talk to because they go through difficult times as well. We not just bring them into the world and then we just left them to do what they want to do and to take care of them own self. No. They need your strength, your support. They need your motivation. They need your encouragement. You know, they should be able to cry on your shoulder when they're going through difficult times. Yeah. Because... Your child can do a test and feel it, you know, and become so distraught that for the whole day them sad, the whole weekend them sad because guess what? They put out a lot. They made the preparation, but you know, sometimes all certain question structure, it kind of threw them off. You know, and when they realize that they, it's just a simple mistake that they make. Yeah, they can be very hard and critical on themselves because they have their own expectations and their expectation is not met. So how do you encourage them in such regard in going forward? Because you can't have them playing pity party for themselves for how long? 
No, they have to snap out of it because life continues. It's not the end of it. There's time to make adjustment if it's not the end of the school year. Yeah. So be there for them, man, as they strive to achieve and to become the future generation. Because we have to be honest, not all of our kids will be doctor, lawyer, nurse, Indian and chief as they would I say when me I grew up. Yeah. But if everybody was supposed to be um doctor, lawyer, what we, we where would the other persons fit in? And where we would I do because we need them. If we never have no electrician, I who would have we all spill it? Hmm? If we never have no mechanic, I who would have fixed the vehicle for we? Because there are certain things that we as human beings, we don't have those skills. And we don't have the expertise in those areas to do those things. You know? And... I have come to appreciate the careers um, yearly because I have come to acknowledge and to realize that we need these persons, all right? We need them. And because we need them, not everybody are going to be a bookworm. Some persons, they are so practical more than theoretical. And so we need skill-based learning. All right? So some of your parents, you want your child to be this. All right? But the, the skills and the expertise that the child have is gearing in this direction that is going to have them set for life. But to each his own. But I'm saying, look into your child. Okay? Yes. <laughs>